Since the election, we've seen a wave of anti-Semitic incidents and actually bias that covers all groups. And what we saw this weekend is reflective of, of some of that. Meaning that this weekend, uh, in terms of vandalism or in terms of actual like phone calls calling in threats to synagogues? Well, the threats actually, well, we can talk about the, the threats uh, in a minute or so, but actually just this weekend we saw swastikas in, in New York, we saw, we saw a synagogue targeted in Chicago, we saw swastika in Houston. And that's deeply troubling. I mean, this uh, anti-Semitism is not new, of course, but what we've seen since November has really alarmed us and, and caused us great concern for obvious reasons. Okay, and in terms of, you're also getting an uptick in bomb threats being called in? December? Well, yes, in January, actually, there were three waves of bomb threats called against Jewish community institutions, uh, JCCs, across the United States. And they came in three waves, altogether 65 separate incidents and 55 unique JCCs that were targeted. And the FBI is working on, the, on this. Uh, there are challenges to the investigation, even though the FBI has terrific technology and terrific manpower to tackle this. The challenge has been that the technology is a step ahead. Meaning the technology of the hate groups that that's are right. doing this, what technology are they using that's a step ahead of the FBI? Yeah, so what they're using is technology which masks the, uh, the caller it's and uh, so you can't hear the, it distorts the voice but also technology which spoofs the phone number so when the calls are received by the JCCs it looks as if the calls are coming from within inside the building that's um, horror movie stuff yeah it does sound exactly like what you'd see in a horror movie what's causing the uptick look I, I want to be careful we have to avoid sort of easy answers anytime you ask about the why like what's the cause of this and I think there's a lot of layers to this I think certainly the part that we can't ignore is that the campaign for some reason released this ugly Pandora's box of bias that has targeted not just Jews, but all um, many minority groups. And uh, that's been of grave concern to us. So it's your belief that somehow the rhetoric during this toxic campaign did heighten all of this? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, we believe that. And it, it initially, I mean, we, I work in one of our New York offices, and initially it was anecdotal. We knew that our phones were, were busier than they've ever, ever been. Um, and then. Uh, we saw the stats come in, NYPD reporting a, a steep increase, a spike of incidents after the election, and uh, it's, it's of grave concern to us. So what are you doing? What are you advising the Jewish community to do as a result? Well, when it comes to security issues, number one, the most important thing to do is to have a plan. And when you have that anxiety, you have to channel that into better security practices. ADL for many years has worked with Jewish communities to develop those plans, to practice those plans, and to revisit those plans after incidents take place. There are tremendous resources, the FBI is one, but there are community resources available to them. Uh, so that's the first thing to do. And the second thing to do is to take charge of within our own strata of society, work within our schools, work to strengthen hate crimes laws. Our schools have anti-bias education, anti-bullying education. People can work with, within the district and ask, what are we teaching our kids? And to take control, and, and I think on a very personal level, we can as well see how are we speaking to, our, to, our, to others, how do we speak to our children. And it, it can be very empowering. The incident you refer to in New York City, here are ordinary New Yorkers who went to coat their hand sanitizer, who were shocked into silence when they walked into this subway car, but decided we want to do something about it. And I think if there is a silver lining, it is that this wave of hate has really um, caused people to stand up and say, we want to do something about it. That is a silver lining. Um